Hi guys and welcome to Dark Knight Chess. Today we're going to be looking at part one of checkmate patterns that you must know. To get us started we're going to look at the simple walking checkmate with the queen and the rook. Here we're going to use our queen to deliver check and then as the king moves we're simply going to walk this rook and queen all the way to the end. We don't have to worry about the rook being taken as the queen is offering it protection all the way up and we simply continue this walking pattern to the final rank where we deliver checkmate. Now next we're going to look at one that's extremely similar, the two rook mate. And here once again we're going to move our rook up to challenge the enemy king. As it moves up we cannot move our second rook like we did with the queen as the other rook will not protect it so we have to slide it over. The enemy king will continue to come towards our rooks and we must slide it over as well and then we continue our walking pattern. Now once the king moves here we once again cannot simply check as this would leave the rook hanging and free to capture so again we have to move our rook over and the king continues its attack once again because it can't do anything else. Once it's slid over the second time, we simply can continue the walking pattern that we learned before and deliver checkmate. Now we're going to take a look at the battering ram mate. Now we're going to use just very simple examples to be able to highlight how this mate works. So we're going to stack our queen right in front of our rook and then we're going to say that black moved its bishop out to threaten our pawn, pinning it to the rook. And then we simply deliver checkmate with our queen. The queen attacks the king, taking away all of its escape squares, and is protected by the rook, and is something quite simple and easy to employ in games. Next up, we're going to look at a similar mate, the spear mate, in which we're going to be using the queen and the bishop. Here we're going to go h3. We're just going to say that we don't want to be back rank mated. Here the rook slides out to e8 threatening our queen. Now normally we would just take the rook and get checkmate right away. But for the sake of this example we're going to be slightly flashier and go with this spear mate. Here we're stacking the queen right in front of the bishop threatening that g7 square. Here black threatens our king. We have to escape to the escape square that we created. And then black threatens our bishop in which case we go ahead and take g7 delivering checkmate. Next up we're going to check out the scholar's mate which happens for us after we hit e4 e5 and then we're going to move our queen to h5. At this point we're putting pressure on the e pawn threatening to capture it for free. Black has to respond. Typically they are going to respond with knight to c6 as this develops a minor piece for them as well. Then we'll bring out our bishop to c4, threatening the f7 square. Now, this is usually a pattern that many of us have learned really early in our chess careers. We might have learned this when we were very first starting out or had somebody show this to us. But surprisingly, this checkmate pattern right here still catches a lot of people. In fact, in the Lee Chess database, almost 25,000 players rated 1,600 and above have been caught with this checkmate. And it's all due to this simple blunder right here where they move this knight to f6. Once again, this is the most common blunder we see here. Black is developing a knight and attacking the queen simultaneously, but they are doing nothing to defend the weak f7 square that was being threatened. And so we simply take f7 with our queen and deliver checkmate once again. Next up, we're going to look at the king rook checkmate which is surprisingly I've actually ran into several people that didn't know how to do this at lower levels and typically they would just offer a draw but it's actually a very simple checkmate in order to reach here we're going to confine the black king to one rank by moving our rook to h7 then we'll be moving our king up to offer assistance here we're going to have to move our rook to avoid capture, so we slide it over to the other end of the board, and then we continue to move our king forward, and as soon as these opposing kings are facing each other, we can deliver our checkmate by sliding our rook to the final rank, and our king covers all of the escape squares of black's king, delivering a very simple checkmate that's easy to pull off once you know how. 
Now we're going to take a quick look at the king queen mate, the first version. Here, much similar to the way that we checkmated with the rook, we're going to move our queen in order to limit the black king's movement to a single rank, here moving our queen to h7. And as the black king moves forward, we notice that we're not going to have to worry about anything as black's king will never be able to get close enough to take our queen, so we simply just can leave it where it is. We continue to bring our king in order to help achieve the checkmate, and as soon as the kings are facing each other, we slide the white queen in front, delivering checkmate. But there is a second way to do this, which is exactly the same way as we do with the rook, in which case we move our queen to h7, limiting that space once again. As soon as black's king is facing our king and there's no space in between, we simply move our queen down to the final rank, just like we would if we had a rook, and the king likewise takes away all of the available escape squares. Next up, we're going to look at the bishop pair mate. And here, we've reduced black's king's movement to only two squares. It only has g8 and h8 in order to move, as we have our kings facing each other and we have the dark bishop preventing any further movement. So we will use our light squared bishop to deliver a check, and then once it's forced into the corner, we're going to use our second bishop to go ahead and deliver checkmate. The light bishop takes away one of the escape squares, the, our king takes away the other, and the dark bishop delivers the checkmate itself. Now we're going to move to probably what's the most frustrating and difficult to achieve mate, especially in an open game, and that's the bishop knight mate. And here we've been reduced to these two minor pieces, and we have to use them in concert very accurately in order to avoid a stalemate or in order just to avoid a draw due to repetition. So here, once again, we've limited black's king to just two squares, and we're going to use our knight to move to g4, setting up our attack. Then black is forced to move to g8. We're going to move our bishop to h6, delivering check, and then limiting black to only one square it can move to, which is this h8, which is a dark square, which it must be a dark square if we have a dark bishop. If we had our light squared bishop, we would have to use a8 in order to deliver this checkmate. And then we simply move our bishop in line to deliver the checkmate. The knight takes away g8 as it did before when it delivered its check, and our king takes away the other escape squares in order to deliver this checkmate. Now this one's very difficult to achieve, and if you do manage to get this, I would love to see the game where you did. It's always a hard one to find, and if you do, kudos to you, good job. You've definitely been working good on your chess. If you haven't already, I hope that you like and subscribe to the channel. If you like this video, uh, please let me know in the comments if you found this useful, if you're excited to see part two of this series. As always, I will leave a link to the study on Lee Chess so that you can review this at your own leisure if you'd like to take it a little slower than I've covered here in the video. And I hope that you all have fun and play exciting chess in the days to come. Have a great day.